Why are teeth important? Teeth help us eat. Teeth help us talk. Teeth are a part of who we are. Smile! We have four different types of teeth in our mouth. First are our incisors. They are the front four teeth in our mouth on the top and the bottom. The incisors help us with biting into foods. We use our incisors to bite into things like apples and sandwiches. Our canines are next to our incisors. These teeth are used for biting and tearing. After our canines are our premolars and molars. These teeth are used for chewing up our food after we've taken those bites out of it. It's important to remember that our teeth are a living part of our body. There's a strong, hard outside layer called the enamel. Under that is the dentin, which is a little softer layer. And inside of that is the pulp cavity, where the nerves and blood vessels are. What is the difference between adult teeth and primary or baby teeth? The difference is that baby teeth are meant to get loose and fall out. Our adult teeth are permanent. They can last us our whole life as long as we do a good job taking care of them. But remember, just because baby teeth are meant to get loose and fall out doesn't mean that we don't have to take care of them. Baby teeth are very important. We need to make sure that we're taking care of our baby teeth because they hold space in our mouth so that our adult teeth have room to grow in. If we lose a baby tooth too early before it's supposed to come out, then there might not be space in our mouth when that adult tooth that's hiding under the gums is ready to come in. So remember, baby teeth need just as much care and attention as our permanent teeth do. There are five important things you can do to take care of your teeth. Brush two times a day for two minutes each time. Floss one time a day. Eat healthy foods. Drink lots of water. And visit the dentist two times a year for a checkup. You can keep cavities away. Why do we need to brush our teeth? Let's take a closer look. Germs are everywhere. There are germs that live in your mouth. Some are helpful and some can hurt your teeth. Germs have many names like bacteria, plaque, and sometimes they are called sugar bugs. Beware of the acid attack. The bacteria that stick to our teeth take the foods that we eat and drink and they create acid with it. These germs love sugary, sweet foods and drinks and foods with carbohydrates like chips and crackers. The more of these things we eat, the more acid will be on our teeth. The acid, when it sits on our strong, healthy teeth, softens and weakens them, and that's how we get cavities. Brush at least two times a day, in the morning after you wake up, and again at night before you go to bed. Brush for at least two minutes each time you brush. Brush in a circular way. Use tiny, gentle circles when you're brushing your teeth. Remember, you only need a little bit of toothpaste on your toothbrush. Don't forget to brush your tongue, too. Our tongue holds on to germs that can make our breath smelly. So we want to make sure we brush our tongue so we have a fresh, clean mouth. Step one, use a bit of toothpaste. Not much, a pea-sized amount will do. Step two, start brushing your back teeth and molars. Brush the outside of your upper and lower teeth. Hold the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle Movements should be gentle and short, brushing the teeth from top to bottom and from bottom to top. You could also move the toothbrush in small circular motions. Step 3. Brush the inside of your upper and lower teeth. Remember to reach and clean back molars too. Step 4. Brush the chewing surfaces with back and forth motions. Step 5. Now you should clean the rest of your mouth. 
brush gently inside of your cheeks and your tongue. Step six, spit out any excess toothpaste and rinse. What size toothbrush should I use? There are different sizes? Yes, it's important to use a toothbrush that fits your size mouth. So when we're smaller, it's important to use a smaller size toothbrush. If we try to brush our teeth with a larger size toothbrush that doesn't fit in our mouth very well, it's going to be more difficult to reach the areas where plaque is hiding. Remember, using a smaller size toothbrush makes it easier to reach way back where plaque is hiding on your teeth. Also, notice that electric toothbrushes that are made for adults always have the smaller size heads on them because it's much easier to get plaque off our teeth when we use a toothbrush that fits in our mouth nice and easy. Floss at least one time a day. Brushing doesn't get the food and germs that get stuck between your teeth. How to floss. You can use string floss that you wrap around your fingers or little flossers that you hold in your hand. Just use whatever you are most comfortable with. When you floss, you want to make sure that you hug the side of your tooth. You're going to go down underneath the gum just slightly and slide that floss back up the side of your tooth, cleaning all of the plaque and food out of that area. You want to go up one side, down the side, and then on the other tooth that's connecting to that, go up and down that side of the tooth as well. Take your flosser out. If you're using string floss, you can roll to a new piece of floss. If you're using a flosser, make sure you rinse it off so that it's nice and clean before you put it back in between your teeth. When you don't floss, you miss 35% of your teeth surface. Brushing your teeth without flossing is like washing only 65% of your body. Take time to learn how to hold the floss. If using traditional dental floss or tape, take 18 inches of floss, then on both hands, wrap it around the fingers next to your thumbs. There are two ways to put pressure on the floss to help you clean. For your lower teeth, use your middle fingers. For your upper teeth, use your thumbs. The aim is to clean the areas you can't reach with your toothbrush without damaging your gums. Get an inch of floss between your thumbs or middle fingers. Place it where two teeth contact. The floss probably won't drop down between the teeth. To get the floss into this tight gap, wiggle it gently backwards and forwards towards the gum. Eventually, it will get through the tight contact, and you'll reach the gum line. Don't hacksaw into your gums. Once you've reached the gap, move the floss gently below the gum. First, do this on the tooth furthest back. Get it one to two millimeters under the gum. See how from above, the floss forms a C-shape. Wiggle the floss back and forth up the surface of the tooth. Get it all the way past the contact point and pull it out from the gap. Now, move your long piece of floss along so that you have a clean section and go through the same gap again. This time, the C shape should be the other way around, going against the tooth furthest forward. Again, wiggle out along the surface, taking out the stuff that collects between your teeth. That's the sequence. Now repeat this between all the teeth in your mouth. If using a floss pick, use a similar technique, but wash it under running water every two teeth to get the stuff off. Some people prefer floss picks to traditional floss. Choose the type of floss you'll be happy to use every day. Don't be surprised if your gums bleed in the first few weeks of flossing, but consult your dental health professional if bleeding persists. If floss catches or shreds between certain teeth, then ask your dental health professional to investigate why. Always have two boxes of floss in the house. If one runs out, you can start using the second one straight away, 